Hometo Sakyamuni Buddha, Master Yonghua. Hello, everyone. <coughs> Thank you for joining our meditation session. And how is everyone doing? How was your sitting? Anyone have any question? Any comments to share? So. Um, as I was sitting here and thinking what to talk about in this session, I feel felt myself. It actually, it happened like every time I sit, I just my body just bend for work and <laughs> try to not. I'm not sure it happened to anyone like that, and it just happened to me all the time. I'm not sure how to to avoid that yet. Um, it sort of up my my weakness um, during the meditation, especially in crossing and um, even in lecture. We we need to listen to master, but then we just not <laughs> and and fall asleep. That's I think one is one of the uh, meditation sickness. I need to feel it overcome. But um, anyone have any the same sickness? Yes, Waiman Temple. Good morning, Master Z. Good morning, uh, Vicky. I, uh, just a comment. Um, uh, yeah, all the time. In fact, um, uh, this morning, I I was really uh, getting into my sit, and I was feeling lower, 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 lower. And then I thought, uh-oh, <laughs> we're supposed to, we're supposed to be sitting straight up. <laughs> and I I thought, oh, that's too bad. <laughs> So yeah, something I I also have to fight, and um, I think it's a general consensus. We all uh, feel that way as well. That we have to um, force ourselves to, you know, sit straight up. Mm, th thank you, Vicky, for sharing your experience. You know, I'm lucky that I have microphone here in front of me. Anytime I not send out that that help me all get get up. <laughs> Uh, I I feel that any time yeah, I sit here and then I feel the pressure that is on the top of your head. It just puts like someone stand there and push your head down, something like that. Do you feel the same way? <laughs> Uh, number two, please. Hello, Mother Z. Um, when I sit, I move because I know that when I move, I feel less painful. It's not because uh, I think I need to move because I want it to sit longer. So I don't know if should, I should move or I should just. I know I should endure the band and stay the same, but I want the longest, so I keep moving. And it's, it's I control it. I want it to move. It's not because, um, it's not because the movement, the, I, I bend it because naturally is it, after 15 minutes, I feel like if I'm not moving or bend down or move back, I'm gonna feel more painful. That's what I did, like for one, two minutes, and then I get back to normal position. So I don't know, sh should it, what should I do? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Matthew. Yeah, thank you for asking that question. I think um, in our practice, we, we if we practice long enough, we experience though 
kind of situation, right? Mm. Anyone experience uh, the same situation and have anything to offer to two? Yes, Way Mountain Temple, please. Uh, thank you, Master. Yeah, I have the same problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always had pain when I sit, and uh, I also can relieve it by moving. Um, and so I've been trying to go longer and longer without moving. And even the one hour sit without moving is quite a struggle for me, uh, but it's slowly getting better. So. I would say set small goals, <laughs> try to go a little longer each time uh, without moving, and that's what I'm trying to do. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jim. Yes, that I agree, uh, that I try to, to do too. Um, I, yeah, I must have thought of that um, if we we want to improve, we have to to endure, to endure the pain, right? Because that, if we can endure, then we our strength is increased. So that that's how we improve, and then and then and then we, then we move to because we are fired up that the pain, so we we sort of like running away from it, right? We we are afraid not to face it. To, we're afraid to face it. So it's so. So reduce your your moving, and then that will help increase your strength so that you can do better. Number two, please. Thank you, Master Sin, but my goal is one hour, so I want you to read that goal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, um, so I I see that um, because it's difficult, as Jim said, difficult to not to move. Um, just we, but then we like you try you move to to make your feel easy, easier, feel better, and less painful. So that that what what you can do. Right, so so keep keep causing the leg. If you move, and then naturally, if you can sit longer, and then when your chi is, you can sit longer, and then hopefully the the chi it moves better in your body and it clear up some of um, your blockages in the um, chi channel. So it can if if you um, the blockages uh, can uh, re can um, get through, the chick can get through that, and then gradually then you can sit longer and without moving. Yeah, we reduce your moving, but, but that's a natural process. Um, actually, it, it can happen that, um, to that way, but then um, throughout the time, uh, it, the condition is not the same like if you get through that and then in the future you don't get the pain anymore. It's not like that. It's happened again, but you know how to deal with that. Yeah, so uh, if you think that you try to sit longer, that's one way of, of, um, of facing, facing the pain though, because you, when you're longer, you sit longer and then um, you may have to endure the pain longer. So, but maybe it's you feel less painful. That's okay. That uh, one one of the way. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing your experience. Yeah. Mm, anyone else have a question? So I, I feel that it, uh, the pressure is not just from, from the top of the head, like someone pushing us down, but a, a, a different directions from 
from the back, from your soft spine, from the neck. It can be a lot of places. So those, yeah, those pressures. Uh, then you, if you are aware of that, then you can pay attention to to your navel, and that's um, what your sort, your chi right there. If you pay there, and it can help you to um, to be less influenced by by those kind of forces, and then. Doing it long enough, and then the the um, the tense will go down. So that how sitting help you to to release the um, the mental pressures. Number f- number five, please. Let me tell from Master Z. Do you have any yeah. tips for helping kids to meditate? Helping kids um, to meditate. Anyone have kids and try to help them? Of course, Cordelia has kids, so she want to know. Um. Yeah, Master taught uh, us that the only way to to have the kids is just to to give them some kind of incentive to to do it. So um, yeah, so just just give them some incentive. But if I'm not sure it's work or not, uh, I. When I started uh, meditation with Master and my, my son, he, he was quite, I think, he's in uh, like 12 or 13. Yeah, so, but that I, I tried to tell, I tell her to, to cross, to cross the leg, too, but somehow he, he listened to me, <laughs> I don't know. Mm, at that time, I think the, the incentive so for him is he like to play game. So just if you play game and you cross your leg, <laughs> that's the only thing I can tell. That hard time. But so he do that, and so he keep sitting not like every day, um, but then he have time he likes to cross his leg. Yeah. So. Um, and until now, I see. I think he still do that, but I think less often than in the past, because as kids grow up, and they has, I think master said, if you don't see the need to cross the leg, and then they don't do it. But then, because my son, I think he's he exercise a lot, work out a lot, and I think maybe he find that more fun. I don't know, but he. Um, I think he until that um, last year he can I see he can sit more than nowadays maybe got the the work the um, they have small works I don't know but then then he he keep doing that for um, about ten years since since he's in um, high school until now so. Um, I, I guess Master said that that, that give them the blessing. Mm, that is another way, and then net and and um, give them some incentive to do. And that's the only way. So, but then they they have their own um, thoughts. Um, we don't force them to do that until they feel the need to do that, and then together with their blessings, then hopefully they somehow will be interested in meditation. Uh, White Mountain Temple, common, please. Uh, good morning, Master Z. I wanted to reinforce as far as 
children. There are three things that I think are important with the training. One is that you serve as a positive role model. They see you doing it. Um, the second is that you give them an incentive, like you said, when they are able to sit and don't force them or punish them when they don't. Thank you, um, Mary Jo. Yes, I agree. Yeah, at that time, I yeah, I when I was a lay person, I caused a lack of um, not like a lot, but I think like about three, four hours a day at, at least because at that time only work part time, so I have a lot of time to cross my legs. <laughs> I think that um, I was lucky that time. Yes. Yeah, but of course my, my son saw me cross leg a lot too, so maybe that's one of the reason he he kept he kept doing that himself. Uh, number two please. A metaphor matters. So uh if you only have like two hours a day with your kid um, so it's rossing your his try to let him brush his leg uh, over, uh, let him exercise. So which way you should choose for your kid? I mean, as a mom, a lay person, mm. not. Mm, nice, yes. So, um, I think yes, same. I with my son, I uh, I like exercise mostly every day with him. Yeah, I keep okay. Get out, get out of the house, boy, and walk with me. So we used to live in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and they they are they are hiking trail up near the house, and we just go to the trail and, and walk that time. And um, then after. Maybe I have more time with him than than you do now later. So so after walking and and he can have time to cross his leg. But then um, yeah, I think each each kids have a different needs to to cross the leg. I think so. As um, Mary Jo said, we don't um, force them. Just um, if they like to do that, and then they do that. If they don't like, so it, it's okay. Don't force them. So, number, two. Um, number, two. number two again. For Quinton, he he would like to roll his leg, but he exercise. He take a lot of exercise class. I think he couldn't roll his leg. Mm -hmm. But he would love to when he try and he say, Mommy, my leg not draws like yours. Yeah, I think kids, they, they have to have someone to, to, to sit with them. Otherwise, um, there's no one to sit with them and then I don't think it's, it's uh, easy for them to, to sit. So I think they... Maybe we can gather the kids at the temple and then <laughs> have someone to volunteer to to sit with them. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just just let them try their best. It doesn't have to be a certain amount of of, of time during their legs during their sit. They just try their best. At least they can cross their legs for some time and they get uh, get used to the posture and. The, um, the condition. Yeah, just try our best. Thank you, Master Z. Uh, White Mountain um, Temple Common. Good morning, Master Z. Um, morning. I have, uh, hi. I have a question about, um, I have a question to Cordelia. I understand the benefit of meditation and we like to really teach our children for that. 
Um, how was your experience like? If you don't mind, would you share with us? I know Cordelia. I, I'm sure you tried with your son. Uh, was he okay with the meditation? What was his reaction? I know he comes to the temple often with you. Uh, if you could share with us, maybe we might be able to help you even more. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> So I actually um, do quite a bit with Evan. We do mantra together. We sit. He crosses his leg um, when he does homework. Um, but I actually have to, like Master Z said, I have to sit there with him. Unfortunately, I do work a lot. So sitting him with him more than an hour is not possible. So um, whatever I can, I just sit with him so that's why I was trying to see if there's a way to for him I mean I tried to tell him that you can play games sit there and cross your leg but two seconds later he's like gone <laughs> so unless I'm there he's he doesn't have that incentive and um, giving him prizes praising him doesn't really work he's a really hard-headed <laughs> so I think he wants my attention Unfortunately, that's kind of hard to come by, I guess. <clears throat> Does that help? Mm. Hi, thank you. How old is he? He's six. He's really young. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta start him young. I think he's doing really well. I mean, in my personal opinion, he's already doing mantras. He's already sitting with you. Wow. He's, he's doing really... Uh, I mean, he's, he's excellent. Um, so I will, I'll just wait. I won't really force anything anymore. Just uh, encourage him, like, you know, when you have a chance, like, make it like a play. Because it's like a marathon. You can't just give it too much at first. You got to take your time slowly. And... I think it's good that it's already sitting because you're sitting, he sees you, you're his role model, like like uh, other people said. So when he really needs, uh, he'll be able to sit later on when he gets, you know, bigger and more mature. But um, I think he's young, so you should give him more time, let him enjoy uh, other things to do if I, that's my only my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Number five. Um, Cordelia, first of all, I missed your question because I came a little late, but I'm already super impressed about how much Evan is willing to do. And you, <laughs> you can see Daniel is playing right next to me. He's not crossing his leg at all. <laughs> um, so I, I echo a lot with what Sarah said because I have experience with both kids. Um, first of all, thinking back at me, I start sitting vigorously when I have the needs because sitting every day really made a big difference. So I can um, take care of my responsibilities every day. So see the kids, uh, the younger one, I think the only thing I can do right now is and trying to bribe him whenever you play a video game or watch a movie, you try to cross your leg. Um, but usually when I don't look at him, the leg is unbuckled. But when I remind him, he'll put it back. But I'm very glad to see uh, Daniel and Evan, all the kids are willing to come to the temple. I think that builds a lot of blessings for them. And for my older one, I shared last time, I tried many years to encourage him to sit. But the only thing he's willing to do is when he play a video game for a long time and sit. Not until that night when his homework was overwhelming, he needs something to help him. And he noticed the sitter was helping. That's the time, the first time he crossed his leg when he does homework. And after that, he hasn't been crossing his leg doing homework for a while again. I guess the needs is not that urgent when they feel they can manage. They don't really have the motivation to do it um, as diligently as, uh, as we do. But it's just so great. They, they're already exposed to this wonderful tour. And maybe along the way in their lifetime, when they have difficulties, the seeds will sprout. They will resort to meditations, cross their legs to, to help them out. Um, so I think our kids already um, have a lot of advantages uh, regarding the meditation. 
Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Fan, for your feedback. Um, I think just like exercise, maybe I think we just set a certain time during the day because maybe they don't sit long enough as we want, but then they just set a certain time during the day. Like after you go back home to work and then your kids are at home, so just set the time to sit together, something like that. Maybe it's not long as you want, but it creates a habit of doing that. So just a light exercise. Well, you have to reduce some time of, of work hours and then give that for the meditation and then just create a habit of sitting like every day or at least uh, a few days a week and then to see what happened. Yeah. But then after during their 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 sit just just tell them to try uh, their best where they they don't have to um, to hurt themselves. Okay, just endure the pain a little bit, just a little bit a day, and then to see if any difference. I don't know. I hope. <laughs> see, you, YouTube question, please. Thank you, Master. Um, we have a question here from Spook Waters. I sat in lotus for years and endured much pain. I think it made me more capable with physical pain, and now I sit comfy and I feel emotional pain because the physical pain isn't distracting me. Is that wrong? And uh, they also added, full lotus taught me concentration very well because I sat still. Thank you. Mm, thank you. That's a good question. Um, can um, Spook Water elaborate more about em emotional pain and give us like, an example of emotional pain? Um, yeah, I... I um, yeah, as we sit longer and we find our way to endure the, um, the physical pain, and then it's good that you re realize the uh, emotional pain. Um, actually, um, when you um, sit long enough and realize that that the pain from the body, it can originate from the mind. So it, um, it's my experience. It's some, sometimes the mind added the pain to our cell. Um, if if you can realize that, and then we just have to to go to a deep uh, a deeper level of endurance. We we see that we see that, and and try not to react to to that. Okay, uh, Wei Man Temple, please. Or oh, YouTube YouTube comments. Thank you, Master uh, Spook Waters. Um has some comments she says or he says sorry short short breath beating heart or i guess the heart racing and unpleasant thoughts yeah i see yeah thank you that's uh, your example of uh, emotional pain yes um during our um Sit and then, yeah, it's any kind of thoughts can come to us. And then it's good you're aware of that. Um, yeah, it's just yeah, that, um, I think that you to develop a new skill to how to deal with your thoughts because your endurance um, is, is deeper. So just 
just be aware of that and and no don't react to them. You see that um, that master teaching. Um, how, however, to 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 me, um, it's not uh, easy to not to react to those kind of uh, un unpleasant experience. So I. Um, I myself, I have to to recite mantra, to um, to maybe from the beginning we try to distract ourselves from that because we cannot directly face them. But then, um, as and you can sit longer and longer, and then the, you have. Um, like Master said, let, let them beat you, and you beat you, and then you you get stronger and stronger, and then and then can you can endure them. Yeah, but then in the beginning, if you cannot endure that, you have to find a different thing to distract yourself. And then when you know, gradually, and then you're strong enough, and then you can can face um, those uh, emotional pain. Um, yeah, that's the experience of um, um, practitioner uh, who who have um, spent their time long enough and enough effort to do that. YouTube comment, please. Client question for Spook Waters: Did you sit with the right leg on top of the left when you sit in full lotus? And then Spookwaters says, Jane, I did both, right on left and then left on right. Would you like to comment, Master? Okay, yeah, yes. How long, how long have um, he been doing that? <laughs> so the, the um, right on left first and then left on right, how, how long? I, I think it's not the, um, the proper way to do that. Yeah, it has to be the opposite. Could you explain that um, in more detail, uh, Master Z? Because that, um, that, that's the way um, Master Yong Hoa showed us uh, to do. Um, so first, you put your left um, foot on your right thigh. And then you pull the right foot. And you pull it up and put it on the left thigh. That's how we do that. But because um, a, lip, a lot of different teachers on the internet, they, they show people different ways to do it. And then, um, people just follow because they don't know much about that. But then our teaching are from the, um, the meditation patriarchs. So we keep um, doing that. Then um, Master Yong Ho also said that uh, it's um, because there's the order, certain order in the universe that we need to follow. Um, so the, um, it's related to the positive and negative energy of the universe. and. Because um, according to um, Chinese philosophy, um, the, our body parts is part of the body is belong to the negative energy, and the other part is it belong to the positive negative, and we have to follow that order to to have our sitting uh, follow the that structure of the universe. If we do that differently, then it can cause a problem in the long term. Thank you for asking question. That question, so um, though, yeah. Um, because um, a lot of people actually, they when they don't have experience, they just just do um, 
what is on the internet. That's not a good thing. So that's that's why um, to 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 trust and follow the instruction of a a good known advisor is um, uh, very important for our practice. So the quick Martin YouTube comment, to please. Thank you, Masters. Uh, Spook Waters has additional comments. Uh, I understand. 20 years in Lotus. I stopped Lotus in 2020. In 2020. She stopped. 20 years in Lotus. I stopped Lotus in the year 2020. No. Oh, so she just she followed that posture for 20 years? I think that's what she's saying. Wow. Mm. But also stopped doing Lotus in 2020. Mm -hmm, I see. So now is she doing it or, or not? Just stop in 2020 and then... Yeah, I, I hope that uh, that long time of doing the improper posture didn't cause uh, much problem for your practice. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So, so she she just uh, did it uh, meditate by herself. There's no direct uh, instructor. Uh, Master Z, I think a little earlier she said, uh, I'll go over her, she says, I sat in Lotus for years and endured much pain. I think it made me more capable of physical pain. Now I sit comfy, which I'm not too sure what she means, mm -hmm. and I feel emotional pain because physical pain isn't distracting me. Is that wrong? And then uh, after that, it says, note, Lotus taught me concentration very well because I sat still. Uh, yes, um, of course, it, when you sit um, oh. long enough, then you can know, um, you like get used to the pen. So, so I think that's... Uh, that's normal among um, meditators if you sit long enough. Um, she has, uh, I apologize. I yeah, 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 go, go ahead, I go ahead, know. Vicky. Yes, yeah. um, uh, further comments, Buddhist Society of Western Australia said, sit comfortably, and I felt nervous about, about it, but I discovered emotional pain after that. I have a variety of teachers, including you. Mm. Oh, um, okay. Thank, thank you for seeing as um, um, your teacher. Um, actually, what I meant is that um, yeah, of course, you um, we uh, see a different. Um, source of instruction uh, on the internet in in books, but what I meant is we 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 have a, a like I myself right right now I just have one instructor that's Master Yong Ho just um, and and um, yes and also in the past I only have one one master but he's passed away or already so um, for. My my whole life, I just have two two uh, instructor. Mm. Then, um, but then what I meant is you have to um, decide that we you only directly um, receive the instruction from from um, from that master, and whatever he uh, she tells you to do to in the practice, we we have to try our best to follow. And um, of course, in our 
in our practice, the most of, of us um, show that by by taking uh, refuge, taking refuge with the master. So we have to follow, um, have the um, formal um, refuge ceremony and have a Dharma name and receive the instruction. Mm. Actually, I, I found that it's very helpful um, for our practice because um, when we de- uh, when we decide to follow that instruction and a good uh, a good teacher will have the responsibility for our progress and um, we don't know how important how important that that is uh, during our time in this our world it's very important because the like we we walk in the jungle and we don't have wisdom. We don't have the light in our mind. We just wonder. And without a direction from a good known advisor, we can get lost without knowing. And that's very dangerous. And YouTube comment, please. Thank you, Master. A further comment from Spook Waters. John Orr is my first and ongoing master. Okay, thank you. So then, so if she continue to to does she receive um, instruction from that that teacher directly and or um, yeah, I just wonder. And um, and compare to to instruction from that teacher and and. Our practice is any um, conflicts, and how do you deal with that? Because um, our teacher, our master, Yonghua, maybe may have some. Because she's been, she's asked question to us too, and master and I uh, provide some of our exp- um, wisdom from master Yonghua. For me, it's just experience. So I'm not sure if she's in conflict with that um, that teacher, and then how how does she deal with that? So um, anyway, uh, so, so this morning we joined uh, after listening uh, to uh, Dharma talk uh, from Master Yong Ho in. From Korea, um, I think that the, to, to the, today was the last talk, and we joined the great um, transference. But uh, I think one of the um, Korean lady chair there, master, said she improved again, and the um, master emphasized um, what she have is the faith in master from the beginning that helped us go through the whole process, a lot of difficulties, and now she Im- Im- improved again, and that's good news. Um, but lucky, luckily that Master analyzed the, the cause of, of her progress, that's her faith in Master, and, and yeah, I, th- I uh, think that's uh, very important to our practice, uh, to have the faith in, in in the master that we have chosen to follow. So, um, a YouTube comment, please. Thank you. Um, uh, additional comments from Spook Waters. Uh, attended a 10-day silent retreat with John Orr, weekend long retreats, retreats week-long retreats and weekend retreats, small group, as well as one-to-one. But I like hearing from all of you. John Orr is a former Theravadan monk who came back to U.S. to teach. Mm, Thank you very much for for your um, information and sharing of your um, practice. I I think if you um, believe to to um, that teacher and then 
then keep following that. Um, then, uh, and thank you for interest in our practice too. And I, I hope you don't find much conflict, much difference between our practice and, and your teachers. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's your choice to, to how to, to um, resolve those kind of conflicts. So anyone else have any question, any comments? No? It's number one, please. Yeah, please, please speak. Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, people put your, um, the mic okay. on. Is it better? Yes, please, right. thank you. Uh, so yeah, I don't really understand why you emphasize so much to sit in a certain position. Because uh, I think any kind of dignified position should be good enough. And for those of us for whom it is difficult because of uh, medical reasons to sit uh, cross-legged, I mean, I think we can make progress also. And I think no, we're not worse meditators than people who can sit cross-legged. Yeah, thank you for your feedback. Yes, I, I agree with that. Uh, we, we don't have to, to cross our legs if we can, but that, um, but the, the, the method is um, invented by the Buddha, so we, we just follow that and um, and that because that's uh, one of the best way to help you um, make the your progress uh, faster. But it's, it doesn't have to be the only way. Uh, the the um, the proof is that uh, like just the lady, uh, we just talked um, in Korea um, a few minutes ago. She she cannot cross her legs um, recently either because she experienced a lot of pain in her knees. It's difficult to do that. But because, um, of course, there are a different um, factor that contribute to the, the your progress, like your blessings but, um, and the faith too. So be, he has, she has strong faith to our master, and she's willing to to take loss and to help other. Yeah, she actually she. She used to be the, um, the kitchen manager of, of our practice because she cooked a lot for our cheese, um, the rotary meditation retreat and uh, Buddha names recitation retreat. And she cooked the first, but now nowadays her health condition doesn't allow to cook anymore. So, but she she continued to to practice and endure the pain and and doesn't lose the faith in our master. So that's, that's why she continued to progress. Um, if we don't have anything else, we can stop today. And thank you for joining the talk. Thank you.